So Scott, we're standing on some very hallowed ground here. Well, of course, we're standing here next to the 40 inch refractor. Uh, it's the most amazing refractor I've ever seen. Well, not only that, but you're standing very close to the spot where Einstein stood to have his photograph taken here at the observatory on May 6, 1921. Well, I'm really honored to be here. You know, now it's uh, almost 95 years after that, right? The telescope now is being used uh, for a regular visual public observing program. That's correct. And that's maybe the first time ever, is that right? Well, there have been intermittent programs for the public over the years, mm -hmm. very, very infrequent. Now we have a program that is many nights every month it's available for public viewing. Wow, so that's, uh, that's an amazing opportunity I think for a lot of people. Um, I can't help but notice that you have all Explore Scientific eye pieces here. You know, I love to see that, but how did you arrive at this decision to get these eye pieces? Because I didn't know that you had selected these. No, you didn't. And I had done a fairly extensive survey of what was available on the market. Mm -hmm. When we decided to open the refractor to the public, we had to go through quite a conversion. Uh, it had been used photographically with a glass plate camera, mm -hmm. film plate camera for many years, decades as a matter of fact. That had to be removed. We had to get a new focuser for uh, the instrument. So along with that came the decision of what kind of eyepieces we were going to use. I, I needed a range of focal lengths, uh, right. different powers, right? because depending upon the evening with our seeing here in Wisconsin, we might have great seeing, we might not have such great seeing. Mm -hmm. So I needed a line and I wanted to go with one manufacturer where we could switch out uh, depending upon the evening. Mm -hmm. um, I also work with a lot of people who have never used a telescope before. Um, so imagine that the very first time they look through a telescope happens to be the great refractor. Wow. And we want the great refractor to really perform well. Sure. So obviously the telescope is part of this equation, but the eyepiece is absolutely critical. It's right. paramount to making this a great experience for people. But this telescope has a ton of focal length. It's like over 19,000 millimeters. 19,357 to be exact. Okay. You know, these eyepieces, um, although they're longer focal length for like smaller amateur telescopes, mm -hmm. but this is still quite a bit of power uh, to start off with. Right. And the actually the lowest power I use, the 40 millimeter, mm -hmm. uh, produces 485 power with this focal length. It's an F19 system. So that's actually the lowest power that I use. Wow. And we go up from there. What kind of objects do you typically look at from here? Typically on the program, um, if the moon is visible, right. we'll start out with that nice bright object, easy for people to focus on because I have to teach them how to focus the telescope. Mm -hmm. um, they have to be able to look through the eyepiece, understand what focus is. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, <clears throat> we spend a little time looking at lunar details and usually moving on to some other solar system object. Hopefully we've got Saturn, Jupiter sometimes, you know, it depends upon the time of year, obviously. I can just imagine the reaction these people have when they look at the instrument. Spectacular. Yeah, yeah. and I, I got to tell you, I'm really, uh, we're humbled and we're honored that, uh, that these people are looking through our eyepieces, but I think that the experience, no matter what, has just got to be kind of life-changing for some of these people as well. I think it is, especially when you're doing a public outreach program this extensive uh, with, a, with a major instrument like this and able to tell, able to tell people about mm -hmm. the history of the uh, telescope, that this was Hubble's telescope for earning his PhD in 1917. Wow. It was Carl Sagan's telescope for earning his PhD in 1960. It's also the telescope that uh, discovered the spiral structure of the Milky Way galaxy. George Ellery Hale used it uh, in some of his monumental studies uh, observing the sun. So we talk a little bit about that kind of history. We don't dwell on that sure. because the, uh, it's an observation program, but we give people a feel for exactly the type of instrument that they're looking through. Very historic, still very uh, noteworthy, very usable, right. uh, a great instrument that uh, we brought back to life. So uh, again, going back to the eyepieces, it was just uh, extremely important that we have uh, a good range of eyepieces to work with, and they're interchangeable with one of our other observing programs with our 24-inch uh, reflector as well. So they're very versatile. So again, the eyepieces were extremely important to the overall experience for the uh, observer, for the uh, participant in our program, and the line of, from Explore Scientific was just, let's just put it this way, it was a no-brainer once I looked at all of what, what was available and uh, had tested some other brands, uh, especially for power, mm -hmm. uh, to see how much power we were actually gonna be able to use because uh, the telescope hadn't been used visually for many, many decades. So there was no one around who could really advise me 
as to what would work and what wouldn't. Sure. So I kind of had to discover that on my own. Right. Um, so used other brands uh, that I had available just to see what powers would work, um, mm -hmm. just to give me an idea. Then I wanted to go for a more premium IP, something that was I knew was going to give a great experience. Mm -hmm. Very sharp to the edge on uh, these in, these eyepieces. Uh, it's a great field of view. Mm -hmm. It's easy for people who have not observed in the past um, to be able to look into uh, the eyepiece and see the object that I'm showing, the Ring Nebula, uh, M13, the Great Globular, and Hercules. Um, splitting easily, easily splitting something like Alberio, uh, oh, sure. a stunning, a stunning object all onto its own. Uh, the Wild Duck Cluster, um, fabulous, um, sharp to the field, right. the outer portion of it, pinpoint stars. Uh, it's just a great, great experience. And it, the performance of the uh, each one of the eyepieces that we've purchased mm -hmm. um, has been above expectations. Wow. and has been, uh, of course, my visitors don't really know the difference because they haven't looked through a bad eyepiece. Sure. They're looking through great eyepieces with a great telescope. So it's all about the presentation so of the instrument. they're spoiled. These well, yeah, they're automatically spoiled. Right. As I have been saying, it's <laughs> like learning how to drive with a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, equivalent. Uh, starting out your observing, very first celestial observing with a 40-inch refractor. Um, is a pretty big, uh, pretty big step for most people to take. Again, I'm, I'm very honored. Uh, our company is very honored to be part of this, and thanks very much. You're welcome.